Okay, so uh, welcome everybody. Uh, thank you for being here. Uh, I'm Matteo Guaita. I might be a new face to some of you. I have only recently uh, joined the EP2 group and I'm working on a thesis called Kinetic Modeling of Plasma Thruster Plumes. So, uh, the first question we have to ask is why do we want to model uh, plasma thruster plumes? Well, to answer this, we have to uh, first see what the characteristic of the plumes that we want to model are. So, of course, we are talking about plasma, so we have charged particles, and due to the high specific inputs of our thrusters, we have highly energetic particles. Uh, these thrusters also have a plume characterized by a large divergence, uh, by low densities, um, especially downstream, uh, which lead to a local regionality, and of course, we'll have the presence of electric and magnetic fields. Uh, so this leads us to our problem motivation. Um, so our main concern is between the interaction between the plume and uh, the thruster itself, uh, because of the large divergence of these plumes um, and the high energy of the particles we have that we may have damage and erosion on the spacecraft components. Uh, and due to the charge nature of the particles, we also have um, the possibility of an electrostatic charging in the spacecraft. Um, as we have seen in Diego's and uh, Celia's presentation, uh, the dynamics inside of the plume may also affect the force produced by the thruster, especially in the presence of a magnetic nozzle. Uh, a last uh, point is that um, Plasma plumes and plasma thrusters have been proposed as a technique for debris removal uh, to try to keep our orbits clean. Um, this, however, also leads to some of the challenges that we will find in our model. Um, the first one of which uh, is the strong coupling between the dynamics of the particles and the generation of electric and magnetic fields. Uh, but we will also find ourselves uh, in a situation which is between the fluid and the molecular regime due to the low density and local regionalities. This means that uh, the assumption of local thermal equilibrium is not always necessarily true. Um, also, the characteristic length of some of these thruster plumes are in the order of meters, which means that we will find ourselves modeling large 3D domains. Uh, so, what, are the, what is the state of the art for the modeling of plumes? Well, um, maybe the uh, first and simplest models uh, are fluid models. These models are based on the, um, on the idea of uh, modeling each of the species present in the plume using fluid equations with uh, electromagnetic terms. These types of models are computationally quite fast, uh, but they do lack some physics. Uh, for example, they make the assumption of local thermal equilibrium, which is not necessarily true. Uh, and also we need to close uh, the fluid equations in some way, which means the uh, assumption of some phenomenological coefficients. Um, another technique are peak models, or also called kinetic models in some cases. Um, and here we, mod we integrate the equation of motions of macroparticles, which represent the physical particles inside of the plume. Uh, while, as you may expect, these models are computationally quite heavy, uh, they also uh, grant some very precise results um, and require little to no assumptions a priori. Um, a way to harness the advantages of both fluid and peak models are hybrid models. In this case, we uh, model the heavier particles, so ions and neutrons, uh, using particles, while the more mobile electrons are modeled as a fluid. Um, this allows us to have to obtain the good computational times of, um, of fluid models, but also inherit some of um, their drawbacks. Uh, for example, again, we assume local thermal equilibrium for the electrons, uh, and we have to close the, um, the fluid equation using some form of, of assumption. Uh, a final type of model are kinetic models. In this case, we are integrating the uh, Vlasov equations to obtain the uh, velocity distribution functions of all of the species inside of the plume. Uh, and then by... Um, by taking the moments of the uh, velocity distribution function, we find the macroscopic plasma quantities. Um, while these type of models uh, are computationally quite fast, uh, and again require few to no assumptions a priori, um, they are only valid for very simplified, or can only be used for very simplified geometries, which means that they are hardly um, utilizable for real life scenarios. So what is the idea behind my thesis? 
uh, the idea is to take a hybrid code and then to uh, gradually introduce particle electrons, uh, so tending towards a full peak code. The idea behind this is to first have uh, a stage in which electrons are modeled simultaneously as a fluid and as particles, um, which means that we can take some of the advantages, again, of the fluid model, such as the reduced computational times, but use the portion of particle electrons to uh, give us a guess on the uh, closure coefficients for the fluid equations. This may also help us to study some specific electron subpopulations, like for example in the case of magnetic nozzles, we can take a look at uh, trapped electrons. Uh, the idea is then, as I said, to proceed to a full peak code. Um, so the objective of the thesis, thesis, again, is to start from a 2D hybrid code, proceed to uh, a code in which electrons are modeled simultaneously as a fluid and as particles, and then take a further step into the 2D, 2D full peak uh, domain. Um, the, code, the code should be verified and validated, uh, and we hope through this process to obtain some better understanding of the plasma fluid dynamics uh, and to produce some relevant scientific material. Um, so, uh, the idea is to start from EP2+, which is a 3D uh, hybrid model for plasma fluid modeling already present and tested in the group, uh, and to expand it gradually. Each, each new expansion can be verified uh, before proceeding to the next. So the idea is first to reduce the dimensionality of, of EP2+, um, which is right now in 3D, but the 2D version will be lighter. Um, and then once this is done, start to work on, a, uh, on the module for particle electrons, uh, and then integrate this with uh, the fluid electrons. Um, at the end of this process, we will gradually tend to assess a full peak model. Uh, the uh, strategy for verification is to use, uh, use some of the codes already present in the group, such as, well, the most straightforward idea would be to use the hybrid version of EP2+, uh, but also we can use uh, Achilles, which is a kinetic model, or other uh, peak models present in the group and currently under the development by uh, Alberto and Eric. Uh, the idea would also be to then validate the model using experimental data. Uh, so some of the results uh, which I have obtained in these last few months. Uh, the first part was the, um, the verification of the 2D version of ETP2 Plus uh, developed by Filippo. Um, and this, in this case, what I have done is taken the 3D solution and extended one of uh, the axes. And this solution should tend, uh, as we see gradually, from uh, the 3D solution to a solution with an extended y-axis to the 2D solution. Uh, as seen here for the electron density, the, um, the solution tends to the 2D one. And for the uh, electric potential, uh, the, this tendency is even more clear. Um, another thing which I have worked on are global current boundary conditions. Uh, why? Well, because the uh, imposing boundary condition on the fluid electrons, especially for the velocity of the electrons, is not so trivial. Uh, what was done previously was to impose that the electron current at each point of the boundary uh, was equal to the ion current uh, leaving the domain. However, this type uh, of conditions may be a bit too constrictive, as what physically happens to preserve neutrality is that over the full domain, the total electron current leaving should be equal to the total ion one. So this is what we obtain using global current uh, boundary conditions in which we, um, we describe the electron current leaving domain as a function of the potential at a point at an infinite distance from uh, the domain. Um, and then we impose that the total electron current is equal to the total ion one. We can therefore solve for the infinity potential which will grant us this condition. And so not only do we impose uh, some more uh, physically accurate uh, boundary conditions, but we also obtain an information on the uh, infinity potential. What are the results of this type of boundary conditions? Well, as you see here, uh, the black line, which is the total current at the uh, domain edges, is not zero, as you would expect, in with the local boundary conditions. Uh, but the effect of this is that we may have, for example, a total current entering the domain from one side and then leaving from another side uh, of the boundary. Uh, the main advantage of this type uh, of boundary conditions is that since we are somehow imposing um, or including an information on an infinite expansion all the way to infinity, 
the solution is uh, less sensitive to the domain size. So we obtain here, I have plotted, uh, I have overlapped the solution with a changing domain size, and inside of the domain, the solutions are very consistent. Um, a final thing which I have been working on in the last month is the uh, implementation of particle electrons. So a first uh, testing strategy is to evolve these particle electrons into a, inside of a steady state um, um, potential map obtained through a hybrid simulation, and we expect that at steady state, the particle electrons should tend to a similar solution to the one obtained with hybrid simulation. So indeed, this is what we obtain for uh, the electron density, and we have some very nice results. But on the other hand, for example, for the electron temperature, the results are not so nice. Uh, this, however, can be explained uh, by a series uh, of effects. The most important of one being that the electron temperature in the hybrid case is uh, due to the choice of the polytropic parameter. Uh, which is a free variable of our simulation. This means that tuning this parameter, we should be able to make the electron, the hybrid electron temperature tend to the uh, particle one. Uh, moreover, in this case, for in the hybrid case, we have coded some um, um, electron collisions which are not present yet uh, in the big simulation. So the next steps, uh, taking a look at the future, well, uh, first of all, I would like to further study the effect of the gamma parameter on the, um, and to study how it affects the similarity between the fluid and the kinetic solutions. Um, and then in the further future, um, I should start working on uh, a, a code which is capable of simultaneously um, evolving fluid and particle electrons. Um, and uh, with these type of particle electrons, uh, use them for a det the dynamic determination of the polytropic parameter for uh, the fluid ones. Uh, then even further in the future, there is to study the interaction between these two electron species, um, and also include collisions for the particle electrons, and then even further in the future, uh, start thinking about a Poisson solver for um, a full peak code, which will then lead us to the capability of using uh, EP2 plus as a full peak code. So uh, this is everything. Uh, thank you for the attention. If you have any questions, uh, I'm here to answer.